have just seen me do was play on a marvelous tab of drum set that consisted of a tom tom, another tom tom, a larger tom tom, a bass drum, a snare drum, a set of hi hat cymbals, and here we have a crash cymbal and a ride cymbal. Now, all these things have to be coordinated into a rhythmic powerhouse. Now, how do we do that if we wanted to start studying drums? What do we do first? Do we attack a drum set? Do we practice with our feet? Do we practice with one hand, with two hands? How do we do these things? This is the problem that most beginners have, and drummers who have started incorrectly develop that problem when they find that they can't produce the things they want to produce rhythmically and technically on the drum set. So they have to go to a teacher to find out what's wrong. Now, what we're going to do is start with our hands, because the first thing a drummer has to learn is how to hold the sticks properly and turn properly, because if he doesn't turn properly, his muscles will not develop for drumming. It's as simple as that. While he is learning how to hold the sticks and turn his hands properly, we're going to introduce one foot, the bass drum foot, the right foot for a right-handed drummer, the left foot for a left-handed drummer. And with that, we will show you how to start developing. First, in the next segment, I will demonstrate and then after that, I will use a surrogate, a student, and show you how I teach it to other people. So that if you're a teacher, you will understand the difference between just picking up a pair of sticks and saying, here's the way you hold it, as differentiated the way I explain it to a student. I take a little more time, I take a little more effort, so that there never will be any question in the student's mind as to how to hold the sticks and move his hands correctly. Because if he doesn't start correctly, there is no foundation. And we're both in trouble, both the student and the teacher. If it's hard for him, it's hard for me as a teacher. So I'm going to try to make it as easy as I can by taking all the time I need to explain very, very clearly and very simply exactly what a student has to do to keep developing from day to day. Let's start with our right hand. Obviously, the first thing we have to do is pick up a stick. We're going to pick up a stick on our right hand. For people who are lefty, they do the same thing with their left hand as we're going to do with our right hand. Now, first thing we do when we pick up the stick is we get, we get something like this. Now, you can't play drums if you hold the stick this way because there's no flexibility in your hand. So the first thing we have to have is flexibility, which means the stick eventually has to be able to move in this type of a position, like a seesaw. And in order to develop a seesaw, we need what we call in physics a fulcrum, a center of balance. As long as this center of balance, this fulcrum, this grip here, is permanently maintained, I can continuously do this with very, very little effort. If this fulcrum or grip starts to move because I'm not holding it properly, I can't use that seesaw anymore because it's top heavy in one place and top, he and top light on the, on the other place, the other end, so to speak. So therefore, what we have to develop first is a grip. Where? That's been a problem that drummers have had since drumming began. What I'm concerned about is to develop a grip that will not only enable us to hold the stick properly, but also the proper grip will be the proper way of developing. Because if you hold the stick improperly, and turn it properly, there's no development. All there is is strain, and that's what we have to eliminate. The hard work is the practice. We practice by exaggerating, so that when we do play, play becomes enjoyment. So inasmuch as we need a very, very sensitive grip that we will feel, I grab the stick as close to the tips of my fingers as possible. Now, blind people read with the tips their fingers because it's the most sensitive part of their head. So therefore, I get the stick as close as possible to the tips without losing a grip. So therefore, I use the first crook in my forefinger and I press the thumb against that crook. Notice I pressed on the side of the forefinger, not in the center or in the palm side of my forefinger. So I will take the stick, place it on the side of my forefinger, keep the thumb just a little ahead 
of the forefinger and use a little pressure, apply a little pressure, my right thumb, not at the tip of the thumb, but toward the first joint. And therefore, I have developed a little grip. And by doing that, this muscle here becomes a little hard. If I relax the grip, the muscle becomes soft. It's a very unusual muscle. It never remains tight if I don't apply pressure. Only when I apply pressure does it achieve a certain degree of hardness. And by developing this muscle, we are on our way toward playing properly. Because once this muscle is developed, you can even change the grip and still maintain the proper playing ease. Now, in this position, if I took the stick and moved it, you'll notice my stick is moving more than my two fingers that are holding the stick. In order to ensure that the whole hand is developed, I take the three lower fingers of my hand, place them around the stick, thusly, so that they touch. Now, if I use these two fingers to go up and down, you will notice my entire hand is moving, not just the stick moving much more than the hand. As soon as I put the fingers around, the entire hand is moving. I am pulling a lot of tight muscles in my wrist, in my fingers, and in the palm of my hand. As soon as I loosen up, I'm not turning as much. Also, by applying just enough pressure to prevent that stick from moving, I am beginning to develop a permanent grip, a firm fulcrum. Now let's go to our left hand. If you play match grip, you do exactly the same thing you did with your right hand, thusly. Thumb ahead of the forefinger, the grip, the arch, the fingers around the stick. But in as much as I've explained that to you, let's go to what we call the traditional grip. And the fulcrum in the traditional grip is produced by taking this bone and bringing it as close as possible to this bone. The bone of the forefinger, the bone of the thumb, thusly. So notice the thumb sticks all the way up and away from the forefinger. Not like this, but away. So that if you put the stick in there, you have a fulcrum between the two bones. Now, if I took that stick and wobbled it a little bit, turned it, you'll notice that the stick is turning more than my wrist and my fulcrum. So in order to make sure that, again, my entire hand is turning, I take the fingers and place them over the stick thusly, between the center finger and the fourth finger, and I place the forefinger over the stick, and now I produce the turn by turning the two bones of the forefinger and the thumb. And notice how the stick turns. It doesn't turn straight up and down. That's a mistake that most drummers do. They watch the tip of the stick, and when they go straight up and down, they bend their wrist. And when they try to turn fast, they find they can't because they're bending their wrist. They're not moving their wrist in a very, very natural position. Some people question the fact that the stick is moving at an angle. But don't you see, when you hit the drum, just when the stick starts to move at an angle, it stops. So you really don't see the angle. If only if I missed, it would go that way. But I don't miss. So the position of my hands and the height of my stick will determine whether I will get this type of an action completely or just part of it. But notice how my wrist turns. Notice everywhere I turn the two bones, my entire hand moves, rather than this, where there's hardly any motion in this area. So what I'm doing, in effect, is starting to turn again every muscle, and any muscle that would be tight within the realm of my hand and my, my forearm is being pulled and stretched, not tightened. The only time you would tighten that muscle is if you bent thusly. We're not doing that, we're turning. In order to prevent that bend, this, we turn out. But you never see that out motion because just as I said, when you go out, you stop when you hit the drum. And notice that turn. Now even though I'm touching the stick with these three fingers, I am motivating the stick with these two bones. And the reason I use the term bone is because you have to feel the turn in this area of your hand, not here, 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 or anywhere else. So that someday,
when you develop that grip, these fingers will remain around the stick in a very, very comfortable manner. So when you want to play what we laughingly call finger technique, you can separate the fulcrum from the rest of your hands and do whatever you want with your fingers without losing your grip. And now that I've shown you how to hold the sticks correctly when practicing and how to turn your hands correctly when practicing, let's apply this to a student. How do I do it when I teach? I approach it just a bit differently. Gary, would you do me a favor and just grab this pencil with your right hand? Great. Now you see, you grabbed and I grabbed you. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you did. You grabbed it on the side of the forefinger, right in that first crook, and you pressed with your thumb. The only different thing I want you to do, Gary, instead of pressing with the tip of your thumb, don't bend your thumb, that's it. Like that. Now, do you feel it on the side of your finger? Mm -hmm. In other words, you should have in here, this little groove right here, should be able to hold that pencil from moving around. Now, in that position, if you apply just a little pressure on your thumb, against your forefinger, you're holding it pretty securely, just tight enough so it won't move. Mm -hmm. now hold it as loose as you can without letting it fall out or lose your grip. Now, if you've ever noticed a rehearsal on television where a conductor was conducting an orchestra, instead of using a baton, he used a pencil, he would invariably grab it the same way. The position of his hand wouldn't be important, but the grip so would be the same. And he would be able to manipulate the pencil up and down, not only with his wrist or his arm, but he could also do it with his finger. But this never moved, because if he moved this, he would lose the grip. And he conducts this way. So you, in effect, did the same thing. See, what you did was grab the pencil, mm -hmm. and the pencil being very delicately, just hold it tight enough to prevent it from moving. And if you hold it tight enough, there's not too, too hard a grip. And no. notice if I press this muscle here, it's a little loose. I want you to tighten up just a little bit. It gets a little tighter. It's still loose. Mm -hmm. It's still not very tight, but it's a little tighter than it was when you didn't hold it tight. Now touch my same place. See how loose it is? Now watch what happens when I tighten up. What happens? Comes like a hard. rock. See, in other words, you, you're a nice young boy with big muscles here and everything, but over here I got you licked. Mm -hmm. See, here I have a muscle. That's <coughs> important to me as a drummer. And if you want to play drums better mm -hmm. than, you, than you have been playing if you're a drummer, or if you want to play drums and enjoy it, you've got to develop this one little muscle right here. See it? Mm -hmm. All right. Grab it again. Now, just hold it tight enough so it doesn't move. It doesn't require a lot of effort, right? No. This pencil's so delicate, you don't even need these three fingers. Now, just imagine you're conducting an orchestra. Feels very comfortable, right? Yes. Okay. Now, let's take this and get a big pencil. In other words, let's, let's get a stick and put it in the same position on the side of the forefinger, mm -hmm. the thumb pressing it at this point and keeping it parallel to the thumb. Now you notice it requires more effort on your part because the stick is much heavier than a pencil. So in order to maintain this grip, you've got to press the thumb against the forefinger a little harder, which means now that you have to have a constant pressure here, which means this is constantly tighter than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Now in that position, move your hands up and down. Notice how the stick is moving more than your hand. The object is to develop hands. You've heard the expression, develop hands, develop wrists. Mm -hmm. How can we develop it? All you're going to develop when you do this is the, is the stick. So let's take the stick, hold it the same way in the first groove. Wait a minute, relax. Don't let it sneak out of that first groove. That requires pressure. Now take these fingers and place them lightly on the stick. Don't grab the stick with these fingers. Keep the stick parallel. The stick should be in the same line as your wrist and forearm. Now take these two fingers, touch the stick, Move your hand up and down. Now, everywhere that stick goes, what else turns? The what? Wrist. Turn. What, what turns? The wrist. No, the hand. What is this? The hand. The wrist isn't moving. Here's your wrist. It's a bow. The entire, we developed this, mm -hmm. but turn. You notice what happens when you turn? Do you feel? In, yeah, throughout the arm. Right up to the forearm, right into the arm. And that's hard. See, wherever the, wherever the forefinger goes and the thumb, so goes the hand by keeping your fingers here. If you take your fingers away, it may not do that. You're going to start waddling. So in other words, we have to develop this part of our hand. This part has a certain amount of development. It will function with this when this becomes more developed. Then all these things will start to work together. But until then, forget about your arm, your forearm. Just think of this. Go up and down. That's it. Feel it? Mm -hmm. All right. 
I want you to do me a favor. I want you to hit that drum very light. Just touch it and come up as if you got an electric shock. That's it. See, what you did was go straight down, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as you touched the drum, you came up how? Exactly the same way you went down. I didn't, I didn't let you do this and come up that way. So that we have an imaginary pathway. See, we're building a pathway to the drum and away from the drum. And notice what you did. You didn't do this and stop and then pick it up. You went like this, as if you got a shock. Try it. That's it. Why do we practice that way? Because of the law of gravity. See, there's no problem hitting a drum. Just drop your thick. But the trick is to get that thick up the same way it went down so that you're in the same position to play again. And where are you playing from? Here. And what do we call this? The fulcrum. Right. There's your grip. As I explained to you, your center of balance is this. We have taken this and put it in this position. We haven't done this. We haven't enjoyed the luxury of doing that until this gets strong. So in order for, to get this strong, you use it by maintaining your grip. In order to get flexibility in your fingers, we keep our fingers around the stick. So every time we turn, our hand is stretching, our muscles are being used, and we're developing complete flexibility in our hand. Now what I want you to do is to play this up and down like that, as we did before, and watch this. Don't watch this, and don't watch this. Watch this and see whether this goes straight up, as if you're touching it with these two fingers. Try it. That's it. Fine. Okay. Now let's go to our left hand. In the left hand, we also have a grip and a fulcrum. But instead of putting it between your thumb and forefinger in this position, in the traditional grip, we grab it between the two bones. Mm -hmm. Now if you put your two bones together, here's what happens. Relax, I'll do it for you. That, see? Mm -hmm. Not this or that. Put it together. You literally form a fist. See, you're right in between the base joint of your thumb and the base joint of your forefinger, putting them together. That's as close as you can bring your thumb and your forefinger together, right? Now, there's no tension. Just don't relax. I don't want anything. That's it. Just put it together like that. No tension. Now, let's take this stick and put it together. Not the fingers, not the thumb, the top, just the two bones. And whatever happens between the two bones becomes your fulcrum. Mm -hmm. Now relax the finger, no tension. Now let's take your, your hand and just turn it. Turn a little faster, up and down. Notice how much the stick moves. Is your hand turning as much? No. So what are you exercising, the stick? The stick doesn't need exercise. This needs exercise. So in order to make sure that the whole hand turns, we'll take these fingers and put them around like that, touching. Only grip is here. Mm -hmm. The grip is between the two bones. Keep these fingers around so that when you turn now, what turns? The whole hand. The whole hand. And notice how your hand turns. Does it turn straight up and down? No. All right. Turn the stick. Watch the stick and hit it down straight. No, straight. Right down. That. No, that's not straight. Right down. Yeah. Do it again. No, straight down. That's it. See, in order to go straight down, you're going to bend your hand. And what have you eliminated? That turn. Mm -hmm. Turn. No, no. See, that, that's exactly what I wanted you to do is you wouldn't do it. Now, just turn your hand correctly. That's it. You see, you've got a sweep. You see that sweep? Mm -hmm. And that's, and take a look at your left wrist. Notice how your left wrist is turning as if you were turning a doorknob. Right. That's right. All right. Now, if I bring your hand down just a little bit, now turn the same way. Now, just as it starts to sweep, what happens? Hit the drum. Therefore, you don't see the sweep. The sweep. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if, you're, if you were too high, you'd miss the drum. If you were too low, you couldn't turn at all. Mm -hmm. So, the next thing we have to do is see what the position is for your left hand on the drum. So therefore, this would be the position down. See, the, the wrist is straight, pick your hand up, now put it down, fine. Now let's pick up your right stick. Put the stick in your hand, the way I showed you before. Stick down. Now, you see you've got a slight bend. No bending of the wrist, so we bring the elbow up to compensate for the fact that the drum may be a little higher than you need, or the seat may be a little lower. But if you should have to play in a drum this high, you bring your elbow up. So that when you're down on the drum, there's no bend. You don't bend wrists. You're not bending here. Now, the first command I would give you is sticks up. Now, don't pick up anything. Just pick up your right hand. All the way up. That's it. Notice what I did. I prevented you from moving your arms. Mm -hmm. Stick down. Pick it up. Are you holding here? Yes. I don't want you to hold here. Just hold here. The okay. two fingers of your fulcrum touch here, so that when you turn, everything turns. Now pick your left hand up. Are you holding here? No. You're holding there. Yeah. Sticks down. 
stick down. Your right hand. Now pick them both up at the same time. A little problem when you play traditional. One hand turns this way, and one hand turns the other way. Sticks down, sticks up. All right. Now what I want you to play is four beats with your right hand. Now I'll tell you when. What's your hurry? Okay. I want you to keep your eye right here, not here. Mm -hmm. I want you to play four beats, and every time you hit that drum, pick it up as if you got a shot. Remembering that you don't use your arms, you don't bend your wrist, mm -hmm. you keep a firm fulcrum, and you put your foot down every time you say one. Let's count in four. Watch this hand. Here's where your eyes should be. One, two, three, begin. One, two, three, four. Fine. Now, let's do the same thing. Watch. Now, take your eye off this hand, put it on this hand, and let's count four again, starting with this hand. One, two, three, begin. One, two, three, four. All right, now you see you're developing a little bend this way. See, what you do is when you turn, turn this way. The way there's, a, there's sort of a shove with your, with, your, with your left hand, that's it. But you see now, stick down. See, the stick has to come down here, not here, because mm -hmm. then you're going to sweep. Stick down, up. Four lefts, I'll give you the tempo. One, two, three, begin. One. Let's see if you can do that by yourself without me holding you back. Before we start, put both sticks on the drum. Stick down. That's the command I give you. Is there a bend here? No. It'll feel a little awkward to pick your, your elbow up. To pick it up so that there's absolutely no bend. That's it. Just a bit. All right. Are you ready to play? Mm-hmm. All right. When practicing, that's the thing you have to do before you practice so that you know whether you're sitting high enough or the drum is high enough. You have to be comfortable. And the way you're comfortable is to see whether this feels good and that feels good. The next command you would give yourself is what? Sticks up. Sticks up. All right. Now you're ready to play. Where should your eye be? On my hands. On your right hand. Right. I'll give you the tempo. One, two, three, begin. One, two, three. Watch your left hand. Four. One way around, two, you shove with three, your thumb. Four. Right, that's good. Okay. I'm going to do it with you. Okay? okay? Sticks down. I got a better idea. Instead of me doing it with you, you watch me and see if I do everything correctly. What's the first thing? The grip, right? Mm -hmm. Next thing to see whether I, I can put the stick on the drum without bending my hands. Right? Mm -hmm. What's the next command? Sticks up. All right. Notice I came up without moving my arms up or bending my wrist. Let's do it again. Sticks down, sticks up. And I'm ready to play. So what would you do? You'd count off me. One, and where should my eye be right now? On your right, right hand. hand. One, two, three, and I beat my foot on one. One, two. Now watch my right hand. Now watch my left hand. See, I turn my hand. There's, there's nothing like this or nothing like that. It looks easy. But you're going to have to practice it so much that you can turn your eyes away and feel the stick going down. And every time you play four notes, what do you do? Put your foot down. You never practice without putting your foot down. All right. Now what I want you to do is play three rights and three lefts. Sticks down. Sticks up. Where should your eye be right now? Right hand. One, two. Where, where? It's not on the right hand. It's on the skin. Here, I can watch your eyes. One, two, begin. One. Two. Watch your left here. All the way. One. Oh, no, you came up. Two. No one. I don't want. You went one, two, three. And it went. There's no. You start from here. Start mm -hmm. with your right hand again. One, two, begin. One, two, three. One. All the way around. Two, good. Three, one. Okay. Two, three. okay. So in other words, when you practice your first lesson, you don't practice fast. You observe. Everything is observation. You can play three, four, six, and eight with your right and your left hand, but very slowly and observe every note. And always feel that you're not playing with your hand, you're playing with two, two fingers in each hand. And the motivation in your right hand is between the, the thumb here and the forefinger here, and with your left hand is between the two bows. That's what's turning, and it turns the whole hand. Any question about that? No. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is apply the accent to practicing. And now that we've learned how to basically practice with a correct grip and a correct turn, let's go to the problem of the accent. Now, anybody who starts drums 
can learn very simply how to make an accent. What they usually do is pick up a stick in this position with the right hand and go. The difference between a non accent with an accent, just raising your arm and coming down hard like you're hammering a nail in, a little stronger. Now, just for practical purposes, I want to show you the difference when I remove the mute. The reason we use a mute is so that we don't go deaf and I, I'm able to talk while I am demonstrating. And the feel of the mute is just like the drum, only much softer. Now, so therefore, if you have to make an accent, all you do is raise your arm. And then when you try to play fast, by the time you go up and down, you've lost too much time. You can't play fast. So when you complain to the teacher, he says, keep practicing, you'll get it. You never do. Now let's, let's find a more practical way of making an accent. And the practical way is a snap. Now I'm holding the stick in this position. My, my right stick is held between the thumb and the forefinger. And if I, I, if I should take my thumb and my forefinger and snap it as I go down thusly, two fingers. Notice what happens to my other three fingers. They have a tendency to do what? Close. If I throw my arm and make an accent thusly, my fingers go away. And also, the tendency is for me to lose my fulcrum. So drummers who have done this and hit a tom-tom, in most cases, they lose the stick because they're so loose and so relaxed that they can't maintain a grip. When I play and I use the two fingers thusly, I get this type of effect. I snap the two fingers, and as I snap, I snap my hand. But first, I snap the two fingers. And that brings my hand forward, and also, as a reflex, my two fingers come around the stick. So the harder I snap, the better the grip. Not this, where I lose everything and then try to grab it. This. Now let's see how it sounds on the drum. Let's see how it sounds without a mute. Notice I didn't have to take a wind-up, because every time you play fast, take a wind-up, you're losing time. By the time you go up and down, I can play four notes. I'm going to play very soft. So the closer I get to the drum, the less wrist and hand I turn. I rely on the tip of the forefinger and the snap of these two fingers. And every time I do that, I'm, I'm doing an exercise in isometrics. This muscle, before I make the accent, is completely relaxed, so as to give me leverage to be able to snap it. If I'm tight, I can't snap, and I revert to the arm. But if I'm relaxed here, just relaxed enough that I don't lose the fulcrum, I have all this leverage to be able to produce speed at a snap. Now, there are times I have to hit a tom-tom or a cymbal and play it loud. I bring my arm there, and then I snap the same way. So that I never do this, I never lose the grip. I never lose that momentum. And every time I'm snapping, you'll notice how my fingers have a tendency to do what? Close. So that the harder I snap, the better the grip. I'm going to play four beats with my right hand. I'm going to accent the fourth beat. Same height. I'm going to do it without the mute. So therefore, you didn't see the accent, but you heard it, unless you were very careful and you watched and you saw that little snap of the two fingers and the, the fingers going around the stick. Here, nothing happens, and there it happened again. One, two, three, snap. And notice, right after the snap, I relaxed. If you don't learn to relax after the snap, you'll be tight and you won't be able to play anymore. That's why drummers who start to play single stroke end up like this because they haven't learned how to relax before an accident to get the leverage they need to snap, and they haven't learned how to, how to relax after the accident so they can continue to turn their wrist. When I have time, I'll do this too. If I feel very loose and relaxed, I'll move my arm, but I never do this. I don't want to lose that stick. When I don't have time, I don't have to go this high to play. And that's the accent in the right hand. And now let's go to our left hand and 
start practicing the correct approach to an accent using the traditional grip. Here is our traditional grip without an accent. This is the way we turned our hands. Now, if I wanted to make a loud note with my left hand, I could raise my arm and come down like that and change everything in my hand, and I'm going to play a loud note. But I can't play anything clean or fast in that position. So what I'm going to do is show you how I developed a stronger hand by the correct application of an accent in my left hand. Here's my left hand without the stick. Here's the way I turn. Now, my fulcrum is between the two bones, so I have to snap something in there. Before I snap, I relax just enough to prevent the stick from moving in my fulcrum, and I snap the thumb forward. As I snap forward, notice my fingers, the last three fingers in my left hand, have a tendency to close. I'm making sort of a fist. And every time I make that fist, as soon as I make it, I relax. But not enough to lose the fulcrum. Let me do it with the stick in my hand. Here's what I play without an accent. Three notes. On the fourth, I'm going to accent. Notice what I did. I snapped and my fingers came around. Not this, not that. The only thing that changed was the speed with which I moved. And my fingers had a tendency to do what? Close. So that the harder I made the accent, the better the grip I had. I'm not going to lose the stick. Now, if I held that position and then moved a the little arm, I'd still keep my fingers around and I would still snap this, my thumb, and make that fist. And every time I do that, you'll notice I never have to do this. I only do it if I want to, if I want to get ex exceptionally loud, but I never do this because that's the way you lose your stick, you lose control. I, if I had to hit a tom tom, I'd bring my hand over and snap this way. Not this. Drummers have done that and lost their left stick. I'm going to play four lefts and accent the fourth. Two, three. Notice what I did. All I did was snap the fulcrum. My fingers automatically, reflex, did this. Once more. One, two, three, snap. Now let's see how it sounds without the mute. One. I did that without using any arms, taking my fingers away. And if I used arms, with this snap and this turn, it would come out like this. And if I lived in an apartment house, I'd be out by the end of the month. Now what I'd like to do is play for you little beats using axes with both my right and my left hand to show you the amount of time I save by not having to go too high when I play. And now in order to demonstrate accents hand to hand at the same height, I'm going to start with paradiddles softly. And as I increase the volume, not only will my accents be higher, but the other beats will be higher to compensate, to get equality in sound. First thing I'm going to do is a paradiddle the way normally drummers used to do it, like this. Notice the angle. It looks beautiful. But I can't play fast that way because it takes too much time to go this high. I'm living it. If I play any faster than that, my arms will come off. Now, here's the way I'll practice it without using the arms. softly, you've got to play close to the drum. Triplets. Left hand. As I get louder, I'll play higher, but I don't take wider. I carry high, but I don't take wider. Time. As long as I have time, I can do anything I want. Because when I do make the action, I always close my fist. And now, Gary, the next.
next thing we're going to do is learn how to make an accent and learn how to practice it so that when you practice it correctly, your hands will continue to get stronger, not just continue to make accents and get strained. All right. Okay. Now, just imagine you have a ball in your hand. How many fingers would you use to hold the ball? I guess three. Three, right. Now, just imagine you're going to hit that camera over there. Mm -hmm. Take aim and just throw the ball. All right. Now, you hit the camera, pretty close to the camera, but there wasn't a lot of speed. Let's do it a little more speed. How would you, how would you get that ball to go faster? What so, would you do? Well, snap a little now, faster. I'll show me. All right. What did you snap? My wrist. All right. And my fingers. Right. In other words, what you did is you snap what first? Your wrist or your fingers? My wrist. Let's see. Try it. What did you snap? My fingers. Right. You're holding the ball with the three fingers. If you, if you snap your wrist, how, how's that ball going to go off? You snap it's your not. fingers. But by snapping the fingers, try it. You'll see it works. By uh, snap the fingers. Yeah, really, snap them. Don't be a, yeah. And when you do that, this moves faster, uh -huh. your arm moves faster. You ever okay. see a girl trying to throw a ball? She'll pick up a ball and she'll do this. She won't do anything snapping here. Mm -hmm. The ball will travel not half as far as you can throw it, not half as accurately. Because she's snapping from here. See, everything is stiff. She goes, hmm. Well, what you did was this. You snapped here. For example, if I pushed you, I could push you off the chair here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of strength there. A lot of power, but there's no speed. There's no snap. So what happens? It doesn't hurt. But if I went over to your face and went like this, that hurts. That speed produces this sound. If I did this, there's no sound. Mm -hmm. See? So in other words, in order to produce an accent, you must create speed with natural turn of your head. So let's see. You snap what? You snap the ball with what you held the ball with, which was what? The fingers. So you snap fingers. Now, let's pick up a stick. Don't play. Let me play for you. I hold the stick with how many fingers? Two. Two. Right. Now, I'm going to play four notes. The first three I'm going to snap up as we did before. Up, up, up. Now, I want to make an accent. How did I make an accent before? Or how did I throw the ball and produce speed? Snap. How many fingers am I holding the stick? Two. With right? Two? two Therefore, fingers. I have to snap two fingers. Watch how I do it. What did I do? What tip of the forefinger? Slow motion. I snapped it down. And as I snapped it down, what else happened? Put your whole hand, hand came down. If I do it faster, you see this. What else happened when I did that? What happened to my other fingers? They close around the stick. Right, like this. Let me do it without a stick. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. And as I do that, this is a reflex. Right. Am I using my arms? No. No, watch. One is up. Two is up. Three is up. Now, in order to be able to snap, I have to be able to have leverage in here, so I relax as much as possible right. without losing the grip, and then I snap the fingers. And watch what happens. See how that finger closes? Mm -hmm. Watch. One is up, two is up, three is up. I'm very relaxed. That Did you hear the difference? Oh, yeah. Let's see how it sounds without the mute. One is up, two is up, three is up. Same height. Do you hear the difference? Did I have to move my arms? No. Did I take my fingers away? The average drummer does this, Gary. And he's, his sticks fly around in his hand. If he hits a top tub or anything else, just a little crooked, he's going to lose the stick because in order for him to do it, he gets very loose. He tries right. to get this type of thing. I don't. I still, if I had to hit a top tub, I'd bring my hand there and then stop this way. Mm -hmm. I'd never take the fingers away. One. Now let's play four rights and accent the fourth. One is up. Two is up. Three. Now stop. Very relaxed so you can, you can close, you can snap that, that forefinger down and everything has to work by reflex. Right. Now relax, it's too tight. Now snap down the two fingers, snap. That's it, relax. Play, play four rights and snap the fourth down. First three up, 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 relax, snap down. No, you didn't snap down no. until you came up. You gotta relax, look, one, two, three, and now I have to think down. Right. And as I snap down, it's just two fingers I think mm -hmm. of. One, one, yep, two. two. Now relax on the third, now snap down. Did you hear that little accent? Yes. All right. Try it again. One, two, now relax on the third. Now, what happened here? Did you notice? The Tightens second up. before you played, you were very loose. The second you played, it got tight. What happened? If you relaxed immediately, what happened? It got loose. Mm -hmm. Two, very loose, tight loose. Normal, grip, very loose, tight loose. Try it. Let's see if you do the same thing. One, loose, normal, normal, very loose, tight loose. Now, 
see what you did. You anticipated the action. You got tight before you snapped down, which mm -hmm. meant you couldn't snap down. I want you to touch my figure here. See what happens. One is normal. Two is normal. Mm -hmm. Three is normal. Two, I get up. It's just loose. Any right. loose, I look. What would you feel that? One second. Yes. Any arms? No. no. Do I have to use my arm to make an action? No. no. But I do sometimes. If I got time, I'll do this. But when I haven't got time, I do this. Same thing. All right. Try it once more. Four rights and accent the fourth. One, two, three. Now relax. Can do it. Now, I'll tell you what you did. You got stiff. See, mm -hmm. instead of flowing, everything got to be very relaxed. Mm -hmm. You just tightening two fingers. You don't try to tighten your. No, no, not this. As you turn, as you snap, turn the whole hand. Let the hand go when you snap. Let the hand turn. One, You're turning now. Two, You're turning now. Three, now turn again. All the way. Four. You're still not turning enough. One, two, three. See, I turn all the way down. In other words, if I'm snapping down, my whole hand has right. to go down. Don't hold here. That's One. Fine. Leave it up. Two. Now relax. Three. Relax. Four. That's it. Try it again. Very slowly. One, One up. Relax. Two. Two up. Relax. Three. Very relaxed. Not that. Four. One. That's it. See, in other words, what you did was this. Now, how does it get better? By using this muscle, every time you relax and snap and then relax again, you're building up a muscle. It's a form of isometrics. You're mm -hmm. forcing blood out and then you're allowing it to come in. So this muscle will get strong, not by holding it tight constantly, but by the, by the, by the relaxation and the snapping. So you're tightening and loosening. You're allowing the blood to go in and out. Any question about that? No. OK. Now let's go to our left hand. In our left hand, we have the same problem. We have to snap. The average drummer does something like this. And it's an action. But when he does that, he also could lose control of the stick. Where am I holding the stick? Between the two bones. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I take the thumb and snap it forward. And as I snap it forward, I don't lose the grip. I still have the fulcrum. Mm -hmm. I go, one is up, two is up, three is up. Very relaxed, and then I snap. What happens to these figures when I snap? They close up a slightly. Watch. One, two, three, four. Let's see how it sounds without the music. One, two, three. You hear it? Mm -hmm. Now imagine if I took a little wind up. It would get louder and louder. If I use my arm, eventually you can use arm. But before you use anything, first let's start developing this, so that this will work in conjunction with this, mm -hmm. this, and everything. Try it again, Gary. With the left hand? Stick down, yes. Stick down, up. I want four left, the first three snap up, the fourth one relax and snap down and relax before and after. Okay. The action. One. One. Two. two three. Relax. Make four. a fist. Now you didn't make a fist. Make a Don't fist. you pick it up. You just relax. It's amazing how it'll come up by itself. Try it again. One. One. Two. two. Keep your fingers around. Three. Now make a fist and relax. That's it. Now you see, that's what you have to learn to do. You have to learn to keep those fingers around. Make And you make it up. Without an action, you an action. See, everything is working nationally. Mm -hmm. You turn. You try I see. Well, you got to be careful, Gary. You have a habit of bending here. Mm -hmm. so you got to learn to shove this way. That's it. Remember the turn. Right. Mm -hmm. One. Let's, let's start again. One. Two. two. Now very relaxed. Three. Now it's like four. That's it. Good. One. Two. Three. Now make it happen. You hear the difference? Mm -hmm. Did you have to move your arms? No. No. Oh, which is going to be better for you? Obviously this, because you'll be able to play closer to the drum and have more control. And now that we have completed a basic understanding of a grip, a turn, and an accent, now let's start putting all this together and learn how to practice so that we can play. And the first thing we're going to do is the most simple coordination of all, which is playing a right stroke and a left stroke and a right stroke and a left stroke, which is called single strokes. Now the first thing I do is I grab the sticks, pick up the sticks exactly the same way as I did before. My right hand with the arch, fingers around the stick. My left hand holding it between the two bones. And I place the sticks down on the drum I'm going to play. And this is the determining factor as to whether I'm sitting too high or too low. Because if you'll notice, my right hand has to be absolutely straight, no bend. My left hand has to be absolutely straight, no bend. My wrist has to be straight in both hands. Now, the next command I give myself is sticks up. Notice I don't use my arms. I just turn the fulcrum up. If 
I turn the fulcrum up, I'm doing the same turn that I did before individually. So let's grab the stick again. Sticks down. Now, if I don't feel comfortable, I either have to raise the throne or lower the drum to give me the comfort that I need to play. And notice that my sticks are pointing down. I have to allow for the rib. When you play on a regular practice device, a piece of rubber, there's no rib. So drummers learn to play flat, and they wonder why they have trouble playing on a drum, because they have to learn to play at this angle. Not this way. They can't play that way. They can do that on a piece of rubber, but they can't do it on a drum. So I use any device that has a rib so that I learn to play at the right angle. After my sticks are down thusly, I pick each stick up like this without using my arms. Sticks down, sticks up. And now I'm ready to play. And according to the way we played before, I want to point the right stick down thusly. Notice that when I came down, by not moving my arm, I still haven't bent anything between my hand and my forearm. My wrist is not bent at the joint. I'll do it with my left hand. But now I want to play one with my right hand, and as I play two with my left hand, I must turn opposite with my right hand, like this. In other words, what I'm building is this, piston rods working opposite, but not slow motion. If you will notice, I turn, watch, by, by watching the stick, you'll notice I turn fast. If I had to play this speed professionally in music, I wouldn't have to turn this fast. All I'd have to do is this. I have plenty of time in which to turn. But what I'm doing when I'm turning this fast, I am, in effect, playing at a much faster tempo. If I took a motion picture of this and showed one slide at a time, this is the speed which my hands would be moving, not this. That's playing. This is practicing. Notice if I bring my hands together, they mesh. They don't mesh. They don't bang into each other. They're turning in completely opposite fashion. Not only are they turning oppositely, but I'm pointing down every time I turn, and my hands are moving very fast in an opposite direction with no arms, no bending of the wrist. Next thing we're going to do is practice single strokes. You've heard of that, haven't you? Yeah. Hand to hand, they call it. Mm -hmm. All right. Sticks down. Get a good grip. Make sure there's no bend. If you have to bring your elbow out, get the thumb just a little back there so you don't start to grab it. Here's mm -hmm. the grip. All right, now the next command I'll give you sticks up. All right, you can turn. See now? You gotta turn more, you gotta stretch the muscles in here. You're not, you're not gonna stretch them if you stop here. See, when I pick the sticks up, Gary, watch where my sticks go. Mm -hmm. See, I'm pulling, I can't get into trouble. See, my hands are very, very relaxed. See, when I turn, you see the muscles move. That's not flabbiness, that's flexibility. Let's try it again, Gary. Sticks down, get a good grip. If you feel you're ready, let me know. Turns up. All right, I want you to play a right, and a left and a right. I'll give you the tempo. One, two, three, and I want you to rest on four. Now what I want you to do is put your foot down every time you say three and count out loud. One, two, three. And on three, I want you to make an action. Okay. Now let's see what happens. One, begin. One, One stop. Good. Watch what I do, Gary. See, here's what you did. You did this. One, One. fine. Watch what I do. What did I do? Let's sit down. I pointed the stick down. Right. How far is it off the drum? The tip. Less than About an inch. About an inch. See, I did that this way because if I ended that way, I hit a rib shot. Mm -hmm. See, so in other words, the very fact that we said sticks down was for a purpose, to allow us to play without hitting a rib. So when I came down, mm -hmm. how did I keep the stick down? Watch how I kept it down. Watch my head. See, not with the fingers, with the fulcrum. If I took my fulcrum and pointed it down and kept it there, the stick would remain down. Mm -hmm. Sticks down, up. Play one. See how hard that was? It went like this before you got it down. Just point it right down. Sticks up. Play one. Now watch the most important thing. Watch what happens to one. You just play one when I play two. Watch what happens to one as I play two. What, what happened to one? Goes up. How fast? 
just as fast as the other one went yeah, down. Yeah, as fast as I came down. Did I come down slow motion like this? No. No. I did this one, <laughs> two, right? Right. Sticks down, up. Let's play one. Now, think. You're going to pick this up from here. You're going to put this down from there and point that down, too. All right, good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Relax, relax. Now, you have to relax this here because on three, what do you have to do here? Bring this one down. No, you accent it also. Accent. So it has to, in order to make an action, you have to have leverage. You have to be loose so you can snap your hand. Mm -hmm. Are you loose? Now play three. That's it. And that came up just as fast. What do you do on four? Nothing. Rest, rest. Now you're ready to start with one hand. The left hand. All right. Put your foot on one. Play one. One. All right. Now, let's see if you can play two. Two. Hard. You know why it was hard? You move your arm. Mm-hmm. See? Well, it's too hard. like this. You would fly. You went, you can't move your arms. Mm -hmm. So you got a machine here, see? If you start to move your hand out of line, I'll show you in just a few seconds what happens. Sticks down. Up. I'll think. Here, watch this. Play one. Count. Up. Play one. One. I'll say two without a foot. Two. Now, yeah, you move your arms up. Try to play three. Three. Yeah, see what happens? Can't squeeze. You're, you're, out, of, you're out of line. Sticks down. Up. Play one. One. Now play two. Two. Now no foot no on foot. two. Only on one and three. Sticks down. Up. Play one. One. Now play two. Two. Now relax and play it actually on three. three. What, about, what happened to your foot? I forgot it. All right. Do make it again. sure you bring it this time. Up. One. One. Two without an action. Two. Now an action with this. Three. Now four. Relax. You're four. too tight. Now four. Four is the rest, right? Right. Now you're going to start with the left, but you're going to beat your foot. Go ahead. One. one. Now play two. Two. Now play an action on three. Three. And four is the rest. Four. four. Now play one. One. All right. Two. How many single strokes did you play? Three. We call it a three-stroke rough. Anything you play single strokes, we call roughs. Mm -hmm. Other people call it by other names. All right. Here's the beat. Now I'm going to do it fast. I want you to play fast. Did it up, did it up. Just play anything. Hold it any way you feel comfortable. Just play fast. Did it up, right. Put, put your foot on the axis. On the one, two? On the axis. On the three. Did it up, did it up. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. No, that's one. That's it. Faster. 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 Where's the axis? On the one. Uh, I don't hear it. No, I'm putting it on. No, I didn't hear it. You don't, you know, you're putting your foot on one. I didn't hear your axis. What you're not doing is relaxing. Now, let's see why it's hard. Here's what you're doing. Watch me. See this tempo you can't play. Right? Mm -hmm. Hear the action? Mm -hmm. Am I tight? Must be a trick. Let me show you what the trick is. What am I doing with my right hand? I'll take my left hand and put it on my left thigh. So all you'll hear is my right hand. Right? Do that with right hand. Left. It isn't hard, not really. It isn't hard. You can do it wrong. It'll still come up. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I doing with my left hand? I'm going to do it again. That's my right hand. What am I doing with my left hand? Same thing, starting at a different beat. Right. Do this with your left hand. Then you have tap. Right. Now, here's your right hand. Your left. Together. Where was it hard? When well, you had to put the two hands together. Mm -hmm. See, if you separate your hands. That's not hard. But when you have to learn to coordinate. You ever see electric bells that have two two beaters? They do this mm -hmm. perfectly in coordination. The bells go on and off, and you hear little, 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 perfect. That's what you have to develop. You have to develop perfect coordination. So we practice at this tempo. One, two, three, right? Mm -hmm. All right. When I did this. How fast would I play? Fast. Very fast. If you took a picture of this, the tempo would be this. See, that's why you had trouble with it, and you didn't make an action. Mm -hmm. See, you don't practice this way. That's the three-stroke rough. That's playing it. But when, when you practice, you practice this way. See, this is what most drummers can't do. They can't turn that fast every time they make a mm -hmm. turn. They do this. Sure, it's coming out. But then they, they wonder why they go, and then they can't play. They can't play. But my hands are always what? Dirty. And I'll touch my hand, see if I'm tight. Your hand over here? Over here, right here. That's where you'll feel it. Not tight. The whole secret 
is I've learned to turn opposite. Mm -hmm. See, what you're practicing is not a three-stroke rough. You're practicing how to turn opposite. We're using the three-stroke rough to practice this. See, so rudiments have a purpose if you practice them correctly. Right. Not this. Because if you practice that way, you end up... You can't play it. You practice opposite. So what I made you do was play at a tempo that you really couldn't play. But when you practice slowly like this, you say, what did I do? Am I doing everything right? Yet the speed with which I'm turning is this speed. Because if I mm -hmm. took a picture of this and showed one slide at a time, this is what you'd see. You wouldn't see this. It couldn't come out. So you'd have to turn like a machine. Understand mm -hmm. that? So let's try it again. Sticks down. So remember, the speed with which you turn opposite is the determining factor as to how fast you'll be able to play with ease. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to turn fast with your arm, you turn with the two faults as relaxed as you can. Especially when you just before you make the action. Be completely relaxed so you can snap your right falcon this way and snap your left falcon that way. Sticks down, up. One, two, three. three. Relax. Point down. One, One count. Two. two. Now snap. Three. Relax. Four. Awesome. One, two. All right, pretty good. Three. Now let me see if I can do it with you, okay? I'm going to hold your hands while you do it. Sticks down. I'll play it together with you. Up. One, two, three. three. Again. Four. One, two, three. All that focus. One, two. What feels funny? Three. Going down or coming up? Four. One. What happened there? Did he couldn't, couldn't come up? One, again. One, One two, two, three. What feels funny? Four. Going up Going or down. Up? Going down. Let's try it again. What? Hold it. Get a focus. One, again. One. Two, three, four, one. What two, feels funny? Going down and coming up. Going up. Let me show it up. Why do I have to force it up? One. Two, you know why? Three, because I'm you're not going up as fast as you're going down the other. See, it's very easy to go down, Gary. You don't even have to turn down. All you gotta do is drop it, it'll go down. But if you want to pick it up as fast as the other hand goes down, you better learn to go up. Mm -hmm. Going down is easy. That's the whole secret. You watch my head. Watch the sticks. See where they go. Opposite. See, if they're not opposite, it can't come up. So if I go down fast, I gotta come up fast. Now how come I play that fast and I'm still not making an action? Because when I play fast and I don't snap the fulcrum, mm -hmm. no action. On the third, I, I act by snapping. What the stick's opposite. The whole trick is to play opposite. Mm -hmm. And you don't play opposite by practicing this. You practice turning fast opposite. So you see, there's a difference between playing a rudiment and practicing. See what I'm doing now? Look how fast that's coming up. And that's the equivalent of this. That's as fast as I'm really playing, but I'm allowing myself the luxury of looking at every note slowly. How fast am I playing? Is everything right? My hands are, because if everything turns right, I'm turning that fast and relax, then I can do that. If I can't do this with ease, then I can't do this with ease. Okay? Okay. All right. Now that we've got a general idea of how to practice single stroke, let's go to the double strokes, commonly known as mammy, daddy, or a roll. Before we try to play it properly, let's see what happens when we do it improperly. We usually start this way. Notice I picked each stick up the same height. It looks great, but I'm going to get into trouble. Watch. At this height, I can't control at that, so I've got to press. And what you hear is a complete amount of rumbles, you hear. You don't hear this. That's what we have to develop. How can we do it? Well, let's see what a roll is when I play a roll just a bit open so you can hear every note. Notice what happens. I play one and the other one comes up almost as high. Not quite as high as the second one. In other words, when you play it correctly, you hit the first one, and you control the other one to come up not quite as high. In other words, it comes up approximately one half. If I did it without a bounce, it would look like this, and I'd come up about halfway. That's the way I play it. But when I do this, I'm controlling the second note. I actually control it. I'm not bouncing it. 
But notice what I also did. Listen to the sound and the volume of the first note. I'm coming halfway up, and it's just as loud, which means that I practice using just a little bit extra power on that second note to make the volume equal to the first note. And then as I come down with my left hand, I pick my right up, just as if I were playing single stroke. When I play with one hand down, the other one comes up. When I play two notes with one hand, the other hand remains motionless until I play opposite. You hear a different sound, but not a different volume. The different sound is produced by hitting different parts of the drum. So notice what I'm doing. I'm playing every note. I'm not bouncing. My whole hand is turning. I'm not doing this. I'm going to end up this way if I do that. So I, I play every note. my feet. That's hard, but what I'm doing is developing my hands to play like a good machine. So that later on when I bounce, I, I use just a little control out of my fingers, and I develop a good roll. But if you persist in doing this, you end up like this. And some drummers I've seen have developed very, very good orchestra rolls, or we call them press rolls, and they're able to press very, very nicely like this. But they can't play loud. The only way you can play loud, you gotta play every note. I'm gonna take the mute off and see what happens. two notes and three or four come up because I have a tremendous rebound on the skin. I have to play loud, I have to play every note. I can't do this. There's no way you can play loud by pressing into a head. Excepting if you had a mic. But we don't have a mic. There you are. The hardest things to play are single strokes and doubles. Because it requires a lot of practice to develop the ability to play two notes and then learn to control the two notes with a bounce. But if you don't play them, it'll never come out clean. And if they do come out clean, they can only come out at a very, very soft volume. But if you want to play, you've got to turn both hands and control it. The next thing we're going to do, Gary, is a double stroke, a roll. In order to practice a roll properly, we have to apply what we did before. Well, we learned the grip and the turn. We learned that single strokes, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Have you ever seen a roll? The average drummer plays roll. Watch the tips of my sticks. Are both sticks coming up the same height? Be, be very careful. From the same angle, yes, I see. Let's see. Are they? No, the right one's right. higher. Well, all right, look at my left hand. Just as high as my right. What you can't observe is this. My second stroke from each hand wasn't as high as the first stroke. Is it? See, I started here. The second one didn't come quite as high. Mm -hmm. Was it as loud? Yeah. All right. The average drummer who plays a roll, he plays two notes, and that's the way he starts. He only starts this way. Mm -hmm. And he picks each stick up how high? Same height. The only person that can play that high and that fast is God when he tried to close the roll. It's impossible for you to play that high and that fast. Mm -hmm. fast. So the average good drummer, when he plays, you see, you see this motion. You don't see this, the same height. Right. Can't. But what you hear when I do it is what? You hear the second note. Mm -hmm. You don't hear this. Here. In other words, I'm always playing that second note mm -hmm. when I practice. So here, see, if you were to take a picture of this, 
you see this. I was hitting the first one, the second one comes up about halfway. The only difference is, I'm not dribbling, I'm playing it. Mm -hmm. So what I did, in effect, was this, when I played this song. You see this motion? Mm -hmm. so you don't see this. You see, definitely the second note is not as high. So what I do is I play the first one, I pick up the second one halfway up, and I come down just as loud as I play the first one. The average drummer, he plays the first, he lets it come up, and he never plays it as loud. Mm -hmm. He dribbles. So you go. What we're going to do is this. One, halfway up, two. Mm -hmm. Try that. One stick. I'll get a focal. Okay. No, no. So you just point up. What do you do when you hit a drum? Bring it up. No, you point down first. Not enough. Leave it down. How do you point a stick down? Now, your elbow is, is not high enough. You're bending your wrist. Stick down. Now get it. Now, up. Play, play one. Leave it down. Do it look. Now, come halfway up. Now make it just as loud, which means here I started here, right? Mm -hmm. I come halfway up, it has to be as loud. So which means I have to apply a little more pressure on that second note. Sticks up. No, no, not an accent. You don't want any motions. Just with the focal. I don't want to see it. No, you see, Gary, you did this. You didn't keep your whole, you didn't pick up your whole hand. The whole hand's got to move. There's no bouncing here. You got here's the position here. That doesn't change. One mm -hmm. halfway up, two. one halfway up. That's it. Do it again. Do it all. Up, 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 up. That's it. Watch this. Don't watch that. Watch this. That's not as loud. All right. Now let's do the same thing with the left hand. Let's take that stick. You got a good grip? Mm -hmm. Don't bend here. Yes. I want you to hit the first one down, come halfway up, just as loud. Do it again, all the way up. All right, now I want you to do this. I want you to play two rags, mm -hmm. get the thumb ahead of the forefinger, sticks down, up. Now every, there's where you start, all right? Eventually, when you loosen up your muscles here, this stick can come just as high as that. Mm -hmm. One, halfway up, two, do that. One, halfway up, two, do your left hand. One, Halfway up, two, one. I stop. How many notes did you play? Four. Well, you played five. Let's let's count. Let's go. Sticks down. Up. Watch what the hand you play with. Go ahead. The right. One. Halfway up, two. Two. One. Halfway up, four. four. One. How many notes did you play? Five. It's a five-stroke roll. So you played two doubles and one single. You didn't play a five. You played a roll. You stopped at five. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, my friend, that concludes the five-stroke call. Gary, the next thing we're going to do is learn how to develop a good flam. A flam is a term used to denote the combination of a grace note with a main note. The grace note is the very, very light note. It's played very gently. Mm -hmm. If you play a grace note with your left hand, and you play the main note with your right hand, that's known as a right flam. If you reverse it and play the, the main note with your left hand and the grace note with your right hand, it's known as a left flam. The term flam is a drum term. It's not used in any other instrumental way. It's just used for drums. Now, in order to develop the feel of a flam, I want you to take two sticks, hold it lightly in your hand. I want you to pick the two sticks up and drop it on the drum together. That, 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 not just together. Not, not, not easy, relax. Just drop Leave them there? Leave them. Just don't. Then pick them up. That's it. Do it again. Sticks up. All right. You're too tight, Gary. I want you. See, you're too tight. I told you, don't hold it tight. You just let it drop. Very, very, like it's just dropping the two sticks. That's it. Do it again, Gary. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Perfect flam. I heard two notes. Right? Mm -hmm. See, what I wanted you to do was that. But that was hard, because what I did there was take the two sticks and put them down exactly the same way. How can I put them down exactly the same way at the same time? By making sure that both sticks were at the same height, and they both came down at the same time, and they both hit simultaneously. But what you did when you were not relaxed, you didn't realize that one of the sticks may have been just a bit higher. And when you brought your two hands down, what happened? You played two sounds, two notes. Mm -hmm. It was easier because both hands were traveling how? the same direction at the same time. See, so it felt very easy. Right. Now, 
when you want to be a consistent player of good flams, you still basically do the same thing. You travel with your hands in the same direction at the same time, but mm -hmm. you control the height of each hand. So let's play sticks down, up. Let's play a left stroke. I didn't say practice lefts. I just say a left stroke. That's it. Now, in that position, you're ready to play a right stroke or a right flip. As I said, this becomes the grace note. Mm -hmm. I want it to be very relaxed, and I want you to forget about this hand. Just hit the drum. That's it. See what you did? You went like this. You made a little what? A little boom boom. Right. You made a, a press. Now, the way to play in this position, I want you to relax your hand. Watch what I do. See? I'm holding my fulcrum. Mm -hmm. See, here's my fulcrum. It's the thumb that's pressing on this bone. I'm going to take that thumb with my finger on it and just take the bottom of the thumb and just, no wrist. All right. Look, try it. No, no, you're still buzzing, see? Sit down. That's it. See, if you do it too hard, you buzz. Mm -hmm. No buzz. That's it. Is it loud? No. All right. Now I'm going to take this here. Watch this. Is that loud? Yeah. Now watch. Let's see if you hear it. This is how I'm going to play it. Watch. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. Why did you hear it, even though it was so soft? Because it came before the main note. Mm -hmm. See, the average drum, when he plays a flam, he plays both hands how? Hard. And he can't play after that. I do this. Mm -hmm. What am I using for a grace note in my left hand? Just this. No left. No, just the thumb. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take it, I'm not losing the fulcrum. See, I'm not, I'm not sliding it. Mm -hmm. See, I'm keeping it stationary, but as I push it, it just moves the stick a fraction of an inch without losing the grip. So let's do this now. From this position, very softly, drop both sticks at the same time. Now, if you drop this at this position and that at this, which is going to hit first? The left one. Right, now do it very lightly, very, both hands lightly. No, no, you not drop them exactly the same time. That's it. See, when you drop it, this is going to come. Mm -hmm. No, no. No, no. At the same time that this goes down, this goes down. Don't, don't do this. You're, you're doing this before you're coming mm -hmm. down. Don't pick it up. That's it. Now pick it up before you play. No, pick it up before you play. Put it back. Without losing the grip, now do it again. So in other words, if I were to play a series of right flams in a mm -hmm. row, watch the thumb. What happens? Back. He's going back. But I'm not losing the grip. See, the grip, in other words, I'm not doing this. I'm not mm -hmm. losing the grip. Try a series of four rights. No, no. Look at this when you do it. No, no. What is this moving? Look. Watch my left. That's not moving. Just the thumb. One, two, three. You're not, no. One. Watch this. Watch. See if it goes like this, back and forth. One. Point it down. One. You don't, two. It's not pointing down. It is pointing down. One. Here. I want to see this move. Forward. Yeah, together with the right hand. No, it's not moving. Now it is. Now it is. Go ahead. No, don't move this. Mm. Don't move this. Just move this. Mm. Hard, isn't it? Yes. See, we cause a little pressure. You got to play fast. I'm just doing it with my thumb. Otherwise, you're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. How would you play? Sticks down. Sticks up. Play a right stroke and point it down. Now, forget about your left hand. Now you're in that position. Hit the drum with that hand. Yeah, you could, uh, don't be tight. Do it very. Yeah, do it very. Just point it out. Do it. Do it. Hit it. All right. Now let's do it again. All right. Don't pick it up. It's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do it. Hard. Yes. Watch what I do, Gary. See you doing this. Watch my hand. See, here's the position of my, my right stick. Mm -hmm. Watch what I do here. Where's my fulcrum? Right here. Mm -hmm. Watch what I do. I take the tip of the forefinger, I open it up. Am I losing the fulcrum? No. Now watch how I play the great stuff. With what? Your index. The tip of the forefinger. Okay. Anything else? No. So the fingers are out, but they're not playing. It's this. See this? Look. Try it. In this position. Open up the forefinger. Now leave this. Keep it around. Don't grab. The only grip is here. But now you have to learn to do this, Gary, without losing your grip. Keep your hand in this position. Open, open this. Open it up. What are you afraid of? Like this. Open this up. The stick is stuck to my hand. Well, then relax. Start again. Get the thumb ahead of the forefinger. Open up the forefinger. Mm -hmm. Now, not this. Keep these around. Open up this hand. Look. Gary, here's what you're doing. I don't want this. I want this. See, I'm not moving the other fingers. Yeah. You want this. Yeah. That's, in other words, see, there's a lot of work you could do to separate this part of your hand because someday you're going to use these fingers 
completely separate from this. You're going to do mm -hmm. this without moving this. So if you can't do this now, how are you going to do this later on? So you have to learn that. Up. That up. When I say up, pick this up. Now bring it down. Just open it up again. Do it. Wait. Look, uh, Gary, here's the position. See? Elbow up so that I don't have a bed. Look what I'm doing. What am I using? This. See? Mm -hmm. What are you watching this? Watch this. Hold your hand this way. Open it up. Then. I gotta see that hand open up like that. I gotta see that finger open up like that. Open it up. Now open it up. Look, watch me, guy. Watch this finger. Can you see it from here? Mm -hmm. yeah, all the way. I, I straight down. Open it up. Hard, isn't it? Because see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. See the first one. Your angle is wrong. How can you do it here? Get over here. Open it up. Open it up. Look. See, when you want to pick the stick up in this position, your fulcrum should be strong enough so that when you pick it up, you move it with the two fingers of your fulcrum. Don't let it wobble. Open it. That's it. Yeah, watch this guy. See, it's all there. Not this. I'm going to go rich. You have to find where the angle is, what position your wrist should be in, so that that stick will come straight up and down mm -hmm. just by using the tip. All right, get the idea. Mm -hmm. That requires practice. It has to build. You have to separate this part of your hand from this, and yet retain the grip. Mm -hmm. Now let's put that right stick down like we pointed down. Pick the left stick up. Now I want you to play two hands simultaneously. Before you play this, you got to open up this. Oh, it's too tight, Gary. That four finger is much too tight. It's supposed to be delicate. Very mm -hmm. delicate. Look, touch my, relax, just touch my forefinger. Very loose. Mm -hmm. very, it's tight enough, the stick won't fall out. Now, at, now if you're going to play with this hand, where should the, the, the tip of the foot? That's it. Now bring them both down together. Same second. Same down. Stick the other way again. See, as soon as you start to move that, move that. That's going to come down first. Go ahead. That's right. Leave it there. I didn't say pick it up. Now open it up. Open it up. No, you see that? Look, guy, yeah, watch this. There's a boop, boop. Open up. No, open up before you play. Open. No, you're not open. No, no, wait a minute. You know, here's what you're doing. You, you, you open up the first one, then you stay there. You gotta keep opening it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Open up that. That. And make a full curve here. Just relax. Uh, it's coming up too high. See, you're using more. Than, see, I feel pressure here, which means you're using more than the tip. Mm -hmm. See if you feel any pressure on my right. Just put your hand on the on the stick here. Take the stick out of your right hand. No. Here's what you've got. See, I feel that pressure because you're using your 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 fulcrum to pick mm -hmm. the stick up. You don't pick anything up. You just open up the the tip of your forefinger. That's enough to do this. Uh, yeah, they have to do it simultaneously. No, no, no. That's it. This open. 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 Do it slowly. Where, where are you going? Do it nice and slow. One at a time. Okay. Open. It's open. Open. Open it up as soon as you get through. See, you have to learn to do this, Gary. Look. See, it open. Every one is moving. The other way. Right up. easy. When you see me do this, I'm completely relaxed. See, what I've been able to do is separate this part of my hair from this hair. Mm -hmm. Do this. Without this even being affected. I'm very relaxed. Touch any part of my hair. No tension whatsoever. All right, you're stiff, you're tight. That will disappear if you take the trouble to do this. Now, this will disappear. Any tension. See, everybody practices like that. If I make an accent, mm -hmm. which hand am I making the accent with? Not with this. See, this is still. You hear the plan? Mm -hmm. Because this comes first. I'll do it the other way. What am I doing? What's the tip? Oh, no tip. So I'll make a face to make it look harder. This is hard for me. I use it. Mm-hmm. Try it once more.
more for luck. Open. Open the gray stuff. No, you're not opening. I gotta see. I see. I don't care where you are. I wanna see some activity in here. You gotta learn to separate that part. Yeah. See, watch how, just for example, Gary, when I play not flares, watch how this works. Yeah, incorporated I'm using my whole hand, but I'm also using that little. That's my high gear. Mm -hmm. This is my high gear. So if you develop it, you not only use it for grace notes, you mm -hmm. use it for other play. Okay? Yes. All righty. Gary, the next thing we're going to do is employ the use of two grace notes mm -hmm. with a main note instead of one. The employment of two grace notes as a double stop is called a half drag. Let's get the position that just sticks down. Up. I want you to play a right stroke. I want you to play a left stroke. Now you're in a position to play a right flam, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, don't play with this hand. Play one grace note. Play a two grace notes. No, no. How'd you play the first grace note? How'd you play a second grace note? Exactly. Why did you change? Same thing. One, two. Now play a right stroke. All right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sticks down. Up. Play a right stroke. Play a left stroke. I want you to do the same thing. Two grace notes and a main note. In this, in this order. Left, left, right. Rest. Rest on four. Okay. Put your foot on one or three. One, two, three. Begin. No, no, no. Why do you don't pick up a stick, Gary? You bring your thumb back. You know, no, nothing but that. Well, oh, wait a minute. You're losing your fulcrum. I don't. I want that fulcrum. Don't move the. Don't slide. You just. You hold it. Just move your grace note. It's got to point down all the time. <laughs> one, two, three. Begin. One, two, three. All right. Now stop. Now, if I wanted you to play, see, if you hit this drum, you shouldn't be here. If I wanted you to play two grace notes, now a left half drag. Mm -hmm. There's your main note. Right. You would have to start on four before you play one. Mm -hmm. In other words, here you just finished one, two, three. On four, you have to start preparing for one. What do you do on four? Open up. You open up this grace note like this, Gary. Watch me. One, two, three. Don't move your wrist. Don't mm -hmm. move the stick. Watch. See, the closer you are, the better I like it. Four. One, two tips, three, tip back, sticks down, up, play a right stroke, play a left stroke, now we're going to play double stroke. One, two, three, begin, thumb back, thumb back again, now with an action, help it up, four, no, no, you picked up the stick, you're supposed to just open up the tip without moving the stick, watch. Four. Did I move the stick? No. No, you did this. There's absolutely no move. Because the higher the high you bring that stick, the less you're going to hear grace notes. You're going to hear main notes. Mm -hmm. I don't want regular notes. All right. Let's get the position as if you finished a left stroke. All right. Play. Left. Two. Three. Bring your thumb back. One. Two. Three. Now bring Open four. One. Open up again. Two. Three. Now bring your thumb back. Four. Uh, one, four. Not three. Two, three quarters. Three. Four, open. One. Two, don't worry about this. Three. Four. One. Nah, two, your left hand went down. Sticks down. All right, bring your right hand up. Your right hand up, Gary. All right, now. See, on the fourth count, that's when you should bring that thumb right. back. You get ready on the notes you don't play. One, mm -hmm. two, three, thumb back. Thumb, two, thumb, three, open. Four, tip, one, two, tip, three, tip, three, open. One, two. Yeah, absolutely, three, no wrist. Four, open. One, open. Two. See, the more, the more you exact control here, the easier it's going to be. Watch me. Four. Watch. Mm -hmm. See, the average drummer, he does this. That's why he presses. Do I press? No, because before I play, uh, the part, the time that, I, that I'm not playing, is before. That's when I open it up. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to develop that speed, you must start this way. How fast should you do it? As fast as you can control it. Mm -hmm. Speed is determined by your ability to do this. Thumb, thumb, open, thumb, thumb, open, thumb, thumb. Now, uh, this is a very, very popular beat if done correctly, and a very, very beautiful embellishment beat. 
And all I play, every time I play the Graceless, what do you see? It's hard. It looks easy. Mm -hmm. Instead of playing, I go. I embellish the rhythm by having the ability to play the grace notes mm -hmm. and rolls. I fill in, and yet I retain. So grace notes are an integral part of a good musical drummer, not just the drummer who keeps time, mm -hmm. but who can take music and embellish it and make it sound more drumistic. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is play what we call a compound stroke, which means combining one rudiment with another. Now, the first rudiment I want to do is a four-stroke rough, which are four single strokes. The average drummer does it this way, left, right, left, right, and he starts again with his left. And he gets the hands up, and the sound. Or he starts with his right and ends with his left. I practice alternation, which means I start with the same hand I finish. I want to combine that with a half drag. I use the, la the last note of a drag becomes the first note of a four-stroke rough. Here's the drag. One, two, three. The three becomes the first note of a four-stroke rough. Here's the drag. Four-stroke rough. One, two, three, four, five, six. What I do on the fourth, on the sixth note, is I pick up the hand I finish with in order to allow me to alternate the rhythmic cue, playing one with my right hand and one with my left. I let the secret out. The combination of a half drag and a four stroke rough is called a rhythmic cue. Inasmuch as I will interpret the grace notes, the double stroke as grace notes, I will play them open, but employ them as grace notes. Therefore, I will use my thumb when I start. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice I use the thumb on the one, two, and I use the tip on the one, two when I alternate. I am actually the third. At that speed, I don't even have to worry about playing the grace notes with my thumb or my forefinger. The momentum of my hand is enough to be able to play the two grace notes without exerting any extra effort. And by some peculiar coincidence, the faster I play, the more I have to use my hands to prevent the stick from being overplayed. In other words, I have to control the grace notes so that I don't play it too loud or too strong. So this is what takes place if you watch my hands when I play the double stroke, when I play a fast. I have to hold back so I don't play it too strong. Now the average drummer never uses this, so he does this. He presses and he becomes tight, so therefore it's a very unmusical sound. This is musical. Or when you play them as if they were triplets. And so on. Want to try it slowly, Gary? Sure. Left hand down, right hand up. And you count in six, put your foot on three and six, thusly. Let me play it once for you. Tip, tip, down, up. I sing, Gary. Every once in a while I hum or I moan or I grunt. I do that because I try to get a feeling into what I'm playing. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thumb, thumb, thumb. Up. Don't turn, just thumb. One, two, three, four, five, six. Up, up. up. That, that comes up, leave this down. This right. has to be down to play the gray right. stones. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, one, but not two. Anyway, you're in trouble, Gary. See, here's where you, where you ended up. Your hand has to be out enough mm -hmm. so that there's no bend. Parallel to your thumb, the 
elbow should be out, so there's no bed, absolutely no mm -hmm. bed here. You look like somebody hurt your head. <laughs> no. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, no, no, you turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Now, what do you do on six? Leave it down. No, you pick it that up. That one stays up in this one. Look. I'm going to exaggerate. I'm exaggerating everything, so you see where the power is coming from. You do it slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sorry. Do it again. again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, it's a full two. on six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, uh, three, four, five, You're not playing with the five, tips. Six. So you do this, Gary, like you broke your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. some of the simple exercises I use for further development of hands. Uh, the first thing I do is write out six eighth notes and a quarter note in the measure of four quarter time. And I play them with my foot in four. And I play all right hands, and then I repeat the seven notes with all left hands. Thusly, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Notice that I pick 
pick each stick up at the same height I started with so that I involve a big stretch in my hand. I don't change the position of my hands. There's no bouncing. There's nothing but big turns. Two, three, four. One, two. Notice the left hand how much it turns. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the following week, I increase that by two more notes. I do this. One, two, three, four, two. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two. Now, when you do this with a person who has comparatively weak hands, you've got to be very gentle with them. You must insist upon it turning all the way up, but you may have to slow the tempo down like this. One, two, three, four. He may have a tendency to lose his grip or to start to move his sticks all over his hand. He must maintain that same grip so that his hand is turning like this kind. No arms, no bending of the wrist. Apply the same rules we had in our first tape. If the hand turns at this slight angle, I'm exaggerating it a bit, but I'm developing a big turn. This big turn gives me flexibility when I want to play fast. I take this series of exercises right up to the fourth beat of the sixth measure, of six measures. One, Four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four. If I get a student to play up to the fourth beat of six measures in that in that position over a period of months, I can ask him to do this. I usually tell him when nobody is looking, let's go back to the first one and do it just a bit faster. But you must pick up the same height and you must maintain the same grip. So he does something like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I do that periodically as we continue to increase the amount of notes. When I get to the fourth beat of the sixth measure and I finish that, I then go back to the very first measure and play instead of one, two, three, four. I do this. I play seven eighth notes, six eighth notes, and a quarter note, and then I double the first six eighth notes and make them sixteenths. Leslie, one, two, three, four. But here's the way it sounds when I combine them: one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In other words, I've doubled it. Let's do it this way. Watch what happens: one, two, three, four. One, two, three. What I'm trying to bring out is that the problem here is one of coordination. I'm not playing any faster, but I'm coordinating my, my other hand, my left hand, to play precisely opposite that my right hand is playing. That produces this. Now, if I can do that faster, my hands have a lot of flexibility. If I want to play real fast, Notice the same height. Left, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When you get up to the fourth beat of the sixth measure, one, two, three, four, three, four, three, 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 and so on. Left hand, one, two, three, four, three, three, and so on, up to sixth measure. You have developed in your stool the ability to play for long periods of time, as long as he's turning his hands correctly, he has enough power to do it to play things like a go for longer periods of time because he's not doing anything to fight himself and you've given him the opportunity to develop his hands by degree. You're not forcing him to strain and kill himself. After we go through a series of exercises like that and we do the same thing with triplets, two, three, four, one, up to the fourth beat of the sixth measure, I do this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I go through a series of exercises, no accents. Then I go back to my to my original eighth notes that I made sixteenths, and I do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I accent every beat without wind-ups, without changing my, my grip, and without doing anything like that. Watch my hands. One, two, three, four. One, two, same height. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Before and after each accent, I relax. relax before and after the action, I'm going to end up this way. Some drummers start single strokes.
strokes like this. And they, end up, they end up like that because they haven't learned how to hit and relax. And that's the thing they learn when they play acts one, relax. Every time they hit an action, I relax. These series are ex of exercises are great. I do them with triplets. Never practicing the accents any higher than I play the other notes. Of course, when I play it, if I've got time, I'll go. I'll do that. If I'm relaxed, I can bring it out. I feel very comfortable doing that. So are most of them, because I'm feeling what I'm doing, and I know I can take the liberty of moving more because it feels good. It's like somebody listening to movie to, to, to music and clapping their hands. They don't do it this way. They, they're very exuberant. They use their entire body. And as long as you have the facility, you can use your entire body like this. But if you haven't got time, at this point, may I take this opportunity to thank you for bearing with me in the presentation of this tape. In subsequent tapes, I would like to bring to you the subject of control of the balance and other vital subjects that I feel drummers need to know more about. Again, may I thank you.